Hello viewers, Super GT here. Welcome back to the Red Bull Ring for some juicy races in this week's Daily Race B. So plenty of uh, discussion of this circuit, lots of uh, history around here. And by history, I don't mean famous race victories, famous F1 deaths or famous overtakes. What I mean is silly track limits. Yeah. Uh, so mainly turn one, there's always this history of running right out very wide and also, in fact, coming through the final two corners. So we're going to kind of have a look. Is that fixed? Can you actually race properly around here? I suppose you could race properly before, even with the weird track limits, but it just felt a bit weird. So coming through turn one, or coming up into turn one. So you can see here, you get two wheels on the kerb, and then people, yes, pretty much keeping within track limits, what looks like a reasonable track limit. So things have improved on this front. They have changed the penalty system now such that they're using the FIA system whereby you have to serve the penalty at uh, the penalty gate uh, one of which is just around this corner here so there's none of this um, serving it wherever you like and the problem around this track was you're coming up to the turn, into turn two which we just went around and when you get on the brakes your penalty will just serve by itself so you'd never really get penalised for getting a penalty so this race here is uh, yeah, Daily Race B, five laps, red ball ring. I am driving the go-to wagon, OP wagon of Group 3, the Audi R8. And well, this car is just, any time it's Race B and, and it's Group 3, this car is just ridiculous. It just seems to, I think the thing about it is that because it kind of slides through the turns a little bit, you can get on the throttle really early. So you can get out of corners with so much speed compared to most other cars. It just really turns so well mid-corner. I think that's the thing, that's the main strength of this car. And when you don't have uh, tire wear to worry about in race B, then it just really has even more strength, to be honest. So through turn one again, you see there, uh, straddling, straddling the sausage, if that doesn't sound too dodgy. So basically the rule now, I think, it seems to be at least that you can keep two wheels as long as you keep two wheels the correct side of the yellow sausage then you're fine and if you go all four wheels beyond it as in to the left of it then that's when you get a penalty so it's quite a clear limit i think and now it's a deterrent because of course you have to save your penalty at the gates and you lose a lot more time by doing that up the inside into turn three with the porsche up so it's taking two laps to go up two positions up into our second place now this kind of happens to me a lot i don't think the qualifying lap was quite up to scratch it was a 20 128.8 which was okay for a, maybe three or four laps but you need to put the time in to get to at least a low 28 if you want to be right at the sharp end of the grid for these uh, races so now uh, we've got through uh, from fourth to second we can turn our attention to the leader 1.2 seconds the gap at this point here so through the second to last corner then down the hill towards the final corner very dodgy corner this one you do have to run out wide on the exit but you can sort of get pulled into the trap of going onto the grass a little bit so i'm going to engage nitrous oxide and quite conveniently the guy in the lead also uses nitrous oxide so you see just how uh, even the gap is throughout this lap so i'm trying to hack the game but he's obviously doing the same thing at exactly the same time quite strange that so this is going to be about a four second lap time here of that, of that quick. So the gap down to 0 0.9. So gained three three temps on him there. 28.6. If you can do 28s or mid 28s at least in the race, then that's very solid pace. I think if you can, let's say you can only do a 29.1, it's your best lap during the race. Probably won't be good enough for a race win. Although obviously it depends on which lobby you're in. If if, if we're talking about um, the highest sportsmanship rated plus up against um, top split drivers or second split drivers then yeah you're going to have to be at least in the 28 if you want to stand a chance unless everyone gets murdered and sent to the shadow realm of course for some obscure reason which is always possible around this track because of normally because of turn two you've got long straights here you've got big braking zones into sharp corners which often does create these uh, portals to the shadow realm and 
you do have to watch out for that, of course. So this point here, this uh, lap has been very good. Uh, you can see, in fact, in fact, purple sector as we go through the second split of the circuit. 0.6 the gap to the leader. We have really shaved that margin down. And again, it kind of confirms to me that my qualifying time wasn't good enough. I probably should be up here straight from the, straight from the off, basically, but I started fourth. Qualifying time wasn't quite good enough. Now, he just ran slightly wide. Is that going to be a penalty? Yes, it is. 0.5. You have to keep two wheels within the red and white. Or should I say two wheels on the red and white curve through most of these corners. Uh, not quite through there. I think just on the yellow sausage curve. But through most of the corners, as long as you keep two wheels on the red and white on the exit of the curves, then you're clean. But he just ran slightly wide, maybe about two pixels wider than he ought to. So he's going to serve his penalty here, 0.5, so not much, but it should be enough. The gap is 0.5 or 0.6 as we cross that gate, and it just shows you you do lose more. So if the penalty is 0.5, you do lose more than that. I'd say you lose probably 0.8 to a second by serving a 0.5 second penalty around this track in this class. So I've inherited the lead. Can I hold it or will I bottle it? That is the question with barely five corners left to go. So coming through from fourth on the grid, potentially to a race victory here. So later on in the video, I will go through my qualifying lap, an improved qualifying lap, a 128.3, just to show you uh, the, the breaking points and the track limits for those who want to shave some time off of their qualifying time for this, for this race. Second to last corner, done. Final corner, pending. And now done. So we've, we've come through from 4th to 1st, I'll take it, I'll happily take that, and a 28.6 just to round out the race. So the last three laps there, 28.6, 28.5, 28.6, very consistent, good pace in the mid-28s, I'll take it. So that is our 31st race victory, Darth Vader looking very happy, presumably, underneath that helmet. Okay, race number 2, this is an example of how things can go a little bit haywire, a little bit worse than what you just saw. So that last race was very ideal, made well-timed overtakes, they didn't fight me back and I could just move on to the next person. So the last thing you want really is to overtake someone and they just start attacking me back instantly. Um, I mean obviously it's well within, within their right to do it, but um, I do want to kind of get away as quick as you can so that they have no chance to fight back. So I'm the inside into turn two. Um, I did just say that this was an unideal start, but this was actually no, this was the ideal race. I'm getting myself confused here. This is an example of how things can also go very well. As um, in the slipstream up to first place. Now I'll break I'm pretty sure I break to the right point here. And um Hungarian guy comes in from quite a way back. But uh, we resume our positions. I don't think there's anything untoward there. Just felt a little bit weird. There's a little bit of contact on the inside. And at the end of the lap the gap around about 0.6 we're just monitoring that gap on the left hand side of the screen so 0.5 0.6 and it quickly goes up to 0.7 one second so he's obviously made a massive mistake coming out of that final corner and he's been overtaken by the danish driver so he's down into third so this is a really good opportunity just to pull away and try to win this race uh, with that gap beyond the 0.75 uh, gap for slipstream so eventually winning 4.7 seconds ahead, that's our 32nd race victory now. Darth Vader again looking very happy with holding up that trophy. So now this is an example of how things can go quite badly. So up the inside goes the Spaniard of the Hungarian into turn two. Looking around the outside, the space kind of opened up, but it's always a dodgy situation. And we get kind of pushed wide a little bit. I, I still don't know if I should have gone for that, should have held back. I had the Mercedes right behind. So it's always a tough decision to make, should you really put it around the outside, because not often they'll see you. And uh, as a result there, kind of getting a bit of contact where you go wide. In fact, it's actually got that guy a penalty. So, uh, inadvertently, by making contact and just driving off the track, I've got that guy a penalty. Although it wasn't really intended, of course, I just wanted to kind of fight around the outside just to keep ahead of Mercedes. So it kind of got awkward. It's a really hard decision sometimes to make through that corner. Do you want to stay behind because you might get overtaken? Or do you just try to force it around the outside? On this occasion, it kind of worked out, I suppose. But really, it hasn't worked out. I, okay, we've gained past that guy. 
who's just got a penalty, but the leader is just long gone now. So that's the main the main issue here. So what's third? Still in third, but a long way off the lead, which is going to be very hard to recover. So it looked like the Mercedes there, a little bit wide coming through the first corner, um, but uh, I don't think he really gained anything too much. So through, to, uh, through turn two, the gap didn't really open. I mean, there was a gap. I could have gone for a savage lunge, but um, it's better, I think, around this track uh, to just to kind of wait. If it doesn't really present itself through turn two, wait and do this and go up the inside into turn three. Park on the apex. There's no way back through for this guy. But you will try to attack around the long right of turn four into turn five. Will he go for it? Not quite. I'll go, I cover him off. So this is the thing around this track. You do need to kind of, well, you probably will have to cover off for maybe a corner or two once you go past someone as they try to come back at you. And they really want to build your gap through that final sector before you come, uh, come back to sector one. So come back to second. I started third, finished second, although made it a lot harder for myself by going down to fourth temporarily. So this is my qualifying lap. Currently a 28.8, but it's going to be a 28.3 the lap you're about to watch so coming up to the line of course you want to get a good exit from that final corner looking into turn one you're looking for the 100 board which is there and you're going to break just before it or on it hooking up the apex nicely and again just keep two wheels beyond or within that yellow line to the right hand side of it the ghost you could just see there went way too wide and that ghost got a 0.5 second penalty so you don't want to go that wide Again, look for the 100 board. You look, you, you're going to break about 20 metres or so. 10 to 20 metres before that. It should hook you up nicely with the apex. And uh, on the on the power on the way out. Nice and smooth on the power. No wheel spin there. Coming down towards turn three. Again, breaking just before the 100 board. So about 20 metres before it. Going downhill into that corner. So you do need to break a little bit earlier than you might think. So coming around then towards turn five. Breaking just before the 50. Uh, down one gear and then waiting to hook up with the apex before powering out to the outside using uh, all of the track limit so red and white keeping two wheels on it but by this point you need to get two wheels within the white line so you do need to be quite careful with exactly where you're placing the car and here two wheels on the red and white and you're fine you can go two wheels beyond it but as long as you, as long as you keep two wheels on it the red and white then you're fine uh, looking for the 100 and the 50 board can be quite hard to spot but breaking halfway between those two Sets you up nicely into that corner. Again, two on the red and white, and you're fine. Into the final corner. Threw it in there a little bit late. Could have taken more curb on the inside. And again, two on the red and white, and you're fine. Coming up towards the line, and there is the 28.9. Uh, sorry, sorry 28.3. But I could have been... I reckon I could have gone maybe a tenth or two quicker than that. Maybe doing a very low 28. So at this point here, we're going to go for the Porsche. And uh, we're going to see if we can win a race in something different other than the Audi R8 which is of course the dominant car we've said it earlier it's, it's very quick in race B very difficult to beat uh, most of the time but the slipstream is so strong around here so powerful um, especially coming through here up towards turn two really have to maximize it so you can keep up with people who are maybe three or four steps quicker a lap than you just by being in the slipstream coming to turn two um, Ferrari out of nowhere, really didn't expect that. I did break a little bit early just to make sure I didn't go into the back of the Hungarian and squirming on, on the exit of the corner and that is an absolute disaster of a start. So a lot of the starts I've had have been quite good but that one's obviously gone wrong. Uh, down from second to fifth so we have to have our work cut out here to, just, uh, to, to try to recover at least a podium although they're not too far ahead. Got the Audi in the lead, got the Ferrari in second, Porsche 911 in third, and then the Mustang, quite interestingly, in fourth. The Mustang really good in a line, so that car very good through the first sector, quite difficult to overtake, and very good at overtaking. So the Dane served the penalty there, losing two seconds, or losing more than two seconds. It was a two second penalty. Through the second to last corner, into the final one, and once again, the Hungarian in the lead, uh, just beginning to edge out that gap. It just shows you, you really do need to be clinical with, with the way that you drive. Um, as soon as you start fighting a little bit too much, then um, or make a mistake, then they're out of the slipstream range. And in a race of only, let's say, eight minutes, I think this race is roughly, 
then it's going to be really difficult to catch back up. So you do need to really make sure you stay within that slipstream range. Sometimes it's best just to not go for a move, just stay there and be patient and wait for the right opportunity to go for it, rather than make a move and make it a bad one and then lose it all. So through turn two, and it's all bunching up here nicely. Up behind the 911, you see just how quick the Mustang is. He's not getting slipstream, but he's pretty much equal speed with the, with the 911. So really quick, that Mustang. But it does suffer through the final sector of the lap, through the uh, more longer, medium speed corners. And it, that, it, it does begin to suffer maybe from here on in throughout the lap. But well, we have def definite potential here to go for a second to recover a second. We're starting a second. So at least maybe just trying to get back to our grid start would be good. At this point here, the person behind, about a second behind, the race pace not exactly high at this point as we are fighting, as we just take a look behind there. So we've got a nice little margin to the person behind. But if we start fighting a little bit too much, which I think is going to happen, then there's, there's a very good chance that this battle could become more than a three-way fight. It could become four or five, as there are two people behind. So across the line at 29.6, not a very good pace at all. We are fighting a bit too much. Mustang up the inside, not the best place to go for a move normally, but he makes it work. Squirms on the exit, and I'm going to go through the middle of the pair of them, so they both get poor runs on the way out of turn one. We are three abreast coming up towards turn two. We're bouncing off each other. As we come up towards the corner, who is going to get this one? As we go on the brakes, Mustang to the left-hand side, and he sweeps around the outside. To be fair to him, that's a really good move. But then on the exit, just gets it all out of shape as he tries to accelerate on the sausage. And for the second time in two straights, we are three abreast once again as we come down towards turn three. I'm on the outside. This probably is not going to work here. Not, not a good opportunity to really fight that one around the outside, especially of two people. It's only going to end in tears. I have to settle in behind. You can see how just you can see just how much that fighting has invited the people from behind into the party. So now it's a four-way fight for second place. So, I mean, this race could have gone really one or two ways. It either goes like this, where you get pounced upon by the people behind and then you just get dragged into a battle, or you just pull away with the leader and uh, you can fight amongst yourselves later in the race. Sometimes a good idea to settle in behind for the first couple of laps, build a big gap to the people behind and then fight at the end. And uh, you can pull away from the, from the rest of the pack that way. But here we have been dragged down and embroiled in, in a hardcore battle. So we're going to really have to fight for this one if I want to get uh, back to my second place. Through turn one, on the exit then, good exit. I'm going to have to push the 911 into a better position. There's no point in trying to pull out there because um, I'm just not going to get the slipstream and just need the slipstream basically. Into turn two, Mustang taking a really interesting line there all over the curb on the way in. 911 a little bit short on the way in. I'm going to cut him back, go for the exit speed. Nicely done. In the slipstream of the Mustang now, can we make it two corners with two overtakes as, we, as we're fully tucked in? You see just how quick that Mustang is though. Still really quick, even though it isn't getting slipstream itself. On the brakes, I'm up the inside. Not the cleanest move you'll ever see, but I've just sent it full Danny Ricardo style into second place. Let's see if I can just clear off into the distance. Really need to get a good final sector here. That Mustang is so good through sector one, through turn one, two, uh, turn two, and turn three. Uh, so you really need to kind of create a security gap for yourself. Get a half a second throughout through the, uh, this sector. So that by the time you get into that first sector, they're not really within range to go for a pass. But if it, in fact, it turns out that the 911 from behind has gone through as well. So the, the Mustang's gone down from second to fourth. He was driving really erratically, I would say really wide on the entrance to the corners, really wide on the exit, squirming the car through the exit in most corners as well. So I think it was only going to be a matter of time before we made a very big mistake and uh, spun out completely. So through turn one, the gap 0 0.7, 0 0.8 as we come up towards turn two. Just need to get this corner right and I should be safe, presumably, from here to the end of the race. Hooking up nicely with the apex, maybe, no, maybe a little bit too much curve. But at the end of the race, the gap was back up to 1.4. So that was a really hard fought race. Really, really had to struggle our way back to second. 29-1. I can do mid-28 in this car. But uh, the pace wasn't electric in that race. 
So for our hard effort, for all our hard work there, I won myself a bloody Group 4 Peugeot. Yeah, about as bad as a prize could possibly get to me. But that is it for this video. I do thank you for watching. Thank you so much, everyone, for 200,000 subscribers. At the time of recording, I don't have it. I'm on like 198, but depending on when you're watching this, I might have it. But either way, thank you so much for being part of it. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.